Okay, this is Jeff Ray once again, the prototographer for Steeped in Light Photography. I wanted to give you guys an update, an exciting one at that, regarding the Evolve 200 twin head adapter for the AD200 series of bulbs and now for the AD360 as well. In response to some requests that I've had made to prove some of the findings I've gotten and to quantify them by metering, I'm excited to put this video together for you guys showing live demo of the Gaussian DigiSky meter employed to test output using both the AD200 and AD360 watt second bulbs in the Evolve twin head adapter using only uh, slot number one and the number one power pack. The number two power pack is installed primarily for ballast and balance, but it is in no way either electrically connected nor in any way uh, connected electronically nor in use. In fact, it's not even energized. So I want you guys to stay tuned for this. Take a look at that video. Hopefully you enjoy the results as much as I have. And at the end, I'll come back with a wrap up. So until then, enjoy. And I'll see you guys on the other side. Once again, this is Jeff Ray, the prototographer. Take a look. All right, guys, welcome back. This is Jeff Ray, the prototographer for Steeped in Light Photography. And I once again want to thank everyone who watched the original series of videos I did on this modification that I've made to the Flashpoint Evolve twin head adapter to allow the use of that AD360 bulb on there, that uh, 360 watt second bulb that was originally configured way back when by the engineers to be used with this head and then just prior to releasing it to the public, uh, they determined they didn't want to do that for a variety of reasons I've already covered. But along the way I had a question that came up from some of the listeners and viewers and I really want to thank you guys for writing in and taking the time to make some of those observations. That was asked a really good question. They said, can you prove what you've said? You've proven that you can get the 360 bulb to fire, but you have haven't been able to prove that you're actually getting that greater output from that tube. And in fact, uh, there were some quotes that were referencing uh, some articles that had appeared actually a little bit earlier um, in other folks' uh, videos, not related to this particular product, but to others. Uh, and the claim was being made at that time that you can indeed put a bulb uh, into a socket that's designed for a lower wattage second output, and it would indeed fire, but it would only fire at the rated value for that particular unit. Uh, in a later video, I'm actually going to do a teardown of these Evolve twin head power packs to show the actual microfarad capacitors on the inside. Uh, there was some question about how we measure output from one of these units. And while we measure watt seconds as the actual amount of generated power required to trigger the ionization process inside these tubes to produce that really bright xenon flash, we actually measure the output power from these capacitors, their ability to deliver a lot of of current in a really short period of time in units of microfarads and actually you know, they're fractional versions of a farad. So what we want to do is go back in and take a look at those later. But for now what I wanted to do was to demonstrate how I'm going about metering these different bulbs, both the AD360 which I have currently mounted in that unit and of course the AD200 that comes with the Evolve twin head um, actual power packs when before they're actually utilized in the twin head adapter. So what I've done is I've acquired, and I've always had for a bit here, the Gaussian DigiSky meter, which has allowed us to both digitally measure consistently a continuous light output for use in video and for still photography, and also by setting it to the proper mode here, and I'm gonna see if I can actually get that display to light up for you guys, you'll see the display lit up now, to actually measure it in flash mode as well. And so one of the things I really like about the DigiSky is it's very compact, very accurate, and it's an, it's an industry standard meter. I'll also be metering this several different ways um, in, in the coming days to show you guys a little bit more of, of how this unit actually functions. But one of the things I wanna do is to point out, and I'll have a, a datum sheet with this that will actually show the results I obtained, but I wanted to point out to you basically the setup that I'm using. So for now, I'm using it as a hardwired unit, and you can see that it's mounted via the PC cord to 3.5 millimeter adapter. 3.5 millimeter, of course, inserts into the power pack, which is in slot one of the Evolve twin head adapter. And then the opposite, of course, is mounted with the PC cable uh, to the Gaussian unit to allow the two to synchronize at a synchronization speed of 1 1 25th of a second. And uh, that was chosen because it allows us to avoid any of the issues that you might complicate things with high speed sync and so forth. So we wanna try to use this in the purest method possible. I start at a 1 1 28th power, and uh, by the end of the datum, you will actually see in the chart that I've created that I go all the way to one to one. Interestingly enough, when I went to one to one, it overpowered the Gaussian meter because I do have a very short cabling system here. I can get about six inches away from the bulb and that's in fact how I calibrated this using the Gaussian meter at a position approximately like this and I will demonstrate that shortly. But I wanted you guys to actually see the actual layout and the hardware that was utilized 
to, uh, to derive some of these metered findings. So I want to thank you guys very much for having asked about that. And in just a moment, I'm going to show it set up on the light stand, and then I'll present that data uh, down below this very short video. But I did want to answer those questions, and I'm really excited to present this data. So thank you all very much for watching, and uh, stay tuned for a little bit more of that setup. All right, here you'll see the test rig as I have established it to record those findings from the Gaussian meter, which you'll see behind the AD360 bulb mounted in the Evolve twin head adapter. You'll also be able to see the cabling there that allows this to occur. What you cannot see from this angle, which I'm gonna show you in just a moment, is the six inch gap between that white diffuser over the uh, metering surface of the Gaussian Digisky and the actual AD360 bulb in this case. Now what I'll be doing during the testing process is I will be firing this at various power levels starting at 1 1 28th, then going to 1 64th, of course, then down to 1 32nd, 1 16th, 1 8th, 1 4th, and 1 half. The reason I'll be stopping at 1 half, getting that 7th reading, for each of these bulbs, the, both the AD360 and the AD200, all of them configured for the same settings on the uh, Gaussian triggering device, which is of course built into the meter. And that will be set for 1 1 25th of a second at ISO 100 speed for our uh, proposed shot that we're gonna be taking so that this meter can actually give us a true uh, f-stop, equivalent f-stop for that ISO and for that shutter speed. I will later uh, do some conversions, and I will also leave that as an exercise for the viewer uh, to convert that to actual lumen output. But understand that this is a meter designed to help someone actually capture a photograph properly exposed, as opposed to a meter that's designed to strictly give you light output. I wanted to use a meter that would be real uh, and in use by photographers uh, around the world, so these results can be replicated if someone chooses to. But in just a moment, I'm going to show that to you from a 90 degree different perspective so that you can actually see the gap between that Gaussian unit and the bulb itself to understand that a little bit better as well. But I'll be doing that seven set of findings, that seven set of bracketed findings from 1 1 28th power to 1 half power. Uh, the reason I don't go to 1 to 1 power is that it actually turned out to be too bright in both the case of the AD200 and the AD360 bulb for the meter at that close a distance. Now, I will also be doing this test again in a few days. I have ordered a wireless uh, transmitter receiver combination that will allow me to use this very same meter with this very same setup uh, at a distance anywhere from a foot to 10 feet to 20 to 30 feet and I'm going to standardize that at 10 feet which is what is oftentimes used for these kinds of findings so that you guys will be able to see the relative f-stop differentials at that test distance as well. But I really want to get this data out to you guys and to answer those questions that came up as quickly as possible so that you guys would have this information in a timely fashion. So I'm going to show that to you in just a moment and then we'll start to do the actual test setup. Okay, first I wanted to give a general overview of our experimental setup bed. You'll notice on the far right hand side the video camera that was used to capture the video live. In the center you have the Evolve twin head adapter. It's been modified for those two bulbs. And on the far left you'll see the DigiSky meter from Gaussen. And here's a close-up of that very same setup so you can see a bit more of the detail. You'll see just a sliver of that white diffusion bulb over the actual test meter um, metering device itself. And you can actually see the cable there, a six inch cable there attached. All right. Here we can see the live view from my video camera's vintage point, the iPhone, showing the manual triggering of the Evolve twin head flash head, whether the AD200 or AD360, using the Gaussian DigiSky and triggering that flash in a synchronized fashion. You'll be able to see that again in just a moment, only we'll be doing it in the dark. All right, here we are in the dark, another live view taking of the actual test bed as the tests were performed. You'll notice that there will be either three or more shots taken in order to get a good average where the meter was able to indicate a high level of confidence in capturing a good finding and giving a good result. You'll also note that in actual testing, the flash unit and meter were held in such a way that that diffusion bulb was always at or near the apex of the bulb in order to guarantee a good average reading. Changing now to 1 16th power. 1 16th power, AD360 bulb. Okay. 
One sixteenth power, the AD 200 bulb. Changing to one eighth power, one eighth power, the AD 360 bulb. One eighth power, the AD two hundred bulb. Increasing now to one quarter power, the AD 360 bulb. One quarter power now changing to the lower watt second AD 200 bulb. Dropping down now to one half power, which is actually increasing the power, of course. The AD360 bulb. One half power, the AD two hundred ball. There you have it, the exciting results. I apologize for the length of this video, but I wanted you guys to see the actual process under test and to see the actual results from an excerpt of that. By the way, the original video on that ran for over 15 minutes, so I will not make anyone endure that. But you will notice the excitement of my voice at a full one-stop meter difference in light output between the AD360 bulb, a 360 watt second conservatively rated bulb, versus the AD200 in precisely the same socket under the same exact test conditions, run with the same power pack at the same power settings. So I'm really excited to see that that's actually been shown now. You guys can see that result for yourself. If you need to, you can go back and review some of that sample video that's there, and you can actually take a good look at the meter itself, which shows up on the video pretty clearly. And if you have any questions, I want you to leave comments down below in the comment section, if you will, and I'll be happy to respond to those as well. I'm excited to bring more of these videos to you guys over time, and I want to thank you so very much for giving both your time and your consideration to this, as well as those great comments that I've received. Please keep writing in, and if there's anything else you'd like for me to test, tweak, play with, whatever, please let me know as well.
So until next time, I want to thank you guys again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the output from this. I'll have the summary of the data below. For those of you who don't want to watch the entire video, if you got to this point, I'll certainly pass that along as well, and you guys will see the summary table. But for anyone who wants to see proof of it, you can certainly review this video as well. Once again, I want to thank you guys. My name is Jeff Ray. I'm the prototographer for Steep and Light Photography. And remember, as always, it's not what you take. It's what you make. So remember to make it matter and make it yours. Till next time. Great shooting, guys.